Um, hey, I'm Thomas Kerst. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Recon AI. I want you to imagine that you're in charge of the Finnish bell rings. You have to make sure the trains go from A to B without problems. Now, um, problems usually happen for one of, two, two, one of two reasons. One being that the train has a problem or that the tracks have a problem. Now, to prevent this for trains from happening is rather easy, isn't it? You take the train, send them into a depot, have them checked up, and then you're done. It's a bit different for the tracks now. I mean, you cannot really pick them up and send them in for polishing, and after, this, after that, they work again. Now, you have to walk down the tracks and have them checked up. To these days, usually it happens, it happens usually once or twice a year to, at the current state of technology. And we believe with current technology, actually, we can make this much better, and by putting a camera on the train. That's it. And with this, um, and then we uh, back it up with a few algorithms, and then you can surveil the railway structure not twice a year, but multiple times a day. This is basically all the technology there is. Let's go into the numbers. Um, we have about 3,300 kilometers of track in Finland, electrified railway tracks, about a quarter million in the world, from which half of it is in Europe. From this, you can estimate the current market size. Um, in the current maintenance market, uh, so, sorry, surveillance market, you have about a market volume of 220 million euros. We believe that with our technology, we completely create a new uncontested market, which is about the size of 70 million euros. And the Recon RE is going to take 13 millions of this market, which is the most profitable one. Um, all the rest is for this, is for our partners and suppliers. How does it go? No. Um, we aim for very quick market penetration. That means um, our product is going to have two key features. First of all, it's going to be a software only because we, um, different train companies have different hardware specifications. So we basically make our software compatible with all of them. Um, and at the same time, we want to work with all of our partners together. So we need to be able to simply integrate it into the current operations um, of the train system, which basically means, well, most trains have cameras already. There's a software running on top of them. Ah, before we go to this slide, I would like to point out, um, um, I was asked to give a number. Um, I, was asked, I was asked to give a number of how much more efficient we are we. Well, I mean, come on. If you have two times a year to the, these days the, um, the maintenance operation, also the, the sort of the trail, uh, the track surveillance, and we do it multiple times a day. I mean, you know, you can imagine how big an improvement this is. All right. As a last note, we are looking for... Um, we are looking for investors for our post-POC development. For the next five years, on average, we, promise, we estimate 164% ROI. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So just as a quick note, I, I want this for my trains. Yeah. And as a second note, why do you do this on trains instead of cars? Well, everyone is doing cars. We do trains. <laughs> No, really. I mean, it's it's an uncontested market. I mean, as we pointed out, this is what we're aiming for. I mean, it's sorry, but come on, Google is doing cars. Why would you do cars? Well, I, I guess the market size for cars would be dozens. Of yeah, but cars. it's contested. So, is it not going to be contested in trains? Uh, because yes, because it's uh, almost much less likely because it's business to government. You need to um, the government already has suppliers that they pick. If you want to go to this market, you need to work with the suppliers. So, and with the governments together. So the thing is like, you get into this market once and then you're there. So and right now it's a good opportunity to enter this market. Usually you have a very high entrance barrier. Right now it's low by using this technology. All right. Thank you, Thomas. Um, since you only focus on the software, how many trains have cameras now? And, and where do you How many of them for different reasons? Uh, sorry. Yeah, and how do you see that developing in the future? Do you have to sort of sell the cameras yourself or? Um, well, first of all, some cameras have, to, uh, some trains have cameras already. Okay. The software could run on top of them. But it's yes, you're right. It's reason to believe that people uh, want that that the companies want or that people who run the train want to get more cameras. But we would not provide them. Our business partners would do that because oftentimes they already have cameras. They want to have specific ones, and we just deliver the software to that. Thank you again. And um, so, how is the market actually organized? Who is the buyer in this situation? Uh, in different markets, I assume train components are different from those who maintain the railway itself. Sometimes it combines, sometimes it's not. So, when you are selling it to the train company, are they the main buyers in this situation? Are they responsible for the railway? 
Um, I think there are two kind of buyers we're looking for. One, for the railway, uh, the railway company is, um, well, in the end, of course, you want to sell to the railway company, but oftentimes they outsource their maintenance operation to suppliers. And I think it might be wisest to tackle the suppliers first, because oftentimes they already provide some kind of tools to do the surveillance. And if you just say, if you just go in and say, like, well, you know, our software can make you more competitive against other possible suppliers, then I think it's a better way to tackle them. So basically, you have either the, uh, the railway companies or the suppliers who do, this, who do the maintenance. And I think we should go for both. I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Mm. Thank you.